Hi, my name is Sam Cheney, and welcome to this Getting Started video for Geomagic DesignX. In this video, I'm going to explain the user interface and explain all of the things that are going on in this view that you see right now, uh, so you'll be more comfortable and confident in the software. So, to give you a little bit of a backstory, DesignX is built on a Parasolid CAD kernel. So that means if you have experience with SolidWorks or Inventor or any of these other computer-aided design or CAD packages, things should be pretty familiar. At the top, we have a toolbar. Now, these, this toolbar is split into different tabs, and these tabs are useful for different points of the workflow. For example, if we're working with a point cloud instead of a mesh, we'll want to use the points toolbar and tab tools from that section to edit the point cloud. If we're working with a mesh or an STL file, we'll want to use the polygons tab. We can use tools like filling holes, where we can fill a partial hole, or run the mesh cleaning wizard or healing wizard up here to edit our mesh to suit. I'm not going to get too far into any specific tools as this is supposed to be a general overview of the user interface. Along with the toolbar, on the left hand side we have our tree menus. So at the top we have our feature tree. This is very similar to a CAD where we can come and have histor uh, historical parametric tracking. So if we need to go back and edit a particular uh, feature, we can. Or if we need to roll the progress all the way back to a certain feature, we can do that as well. Below the model feature tree, we have the model tree. This is where we change and control what is displayed in this viewing window in the middle. Using these radio buttons, we can toggle things to be on or off. So we can control planes being turned on, meshes, solid bodies, surface bodies, etc. This is really useful for staying organized throughout a project. On the, in the middle, we have our model window, and this is where we can rotate and view and zoom into our particular uh, reverse engineering project. And if you're ever confused about how to use the mouse in any of these operations, there is a helpful guide over here. Now, if that guide has disappeared and you want to get it back, you can click on this button in the corner and it will bring it back and show you the mouse control. At the very top, we have uh, another toolbar. This is the first three tools here are for controlling what is displayed. So if we want to change our mesh to display with shaded with edges, we can do that by changing which is selected there. This one is for the CAD or the solid objects. And then this controls how we want our, our entire model to be displayed. We can rotate or flip our viewpoint and also select normal to a particular face. Going along the list, the, re the rest of these tools are all for selections. So if I wanted to select a line or a rectangle, I would select these. Or if I wanted to use something a bit more custom and create a paintbrush selection, I could do that using the paintbrush. At the very far right, we have our properties menu, display menu, and accuracy analyzer. This gives us specific information about what we have selected. So I've selected here for this example, my mesh, and maybe I want to change it from blue to a different color. I can come to my material, select those three dots there, <clears throat> and then change my color to green or yellow. The display menu is great for creating custom displays changing how many lights are on in the scene, for example. And if you want to create a section view, this is a question I get asked a lot, 
you want to create a section view, we've called it view clip in the software. And you select the set button, select the plane that you're interested in using the cross section. And then you can use this to create a custom cross section view that you can then use to look inside your, your part. It sections both the mesh and the, the solid body and whatever you else you have uh, turned on in your model tree. To turn the section view off, simply click this radio button. Finally, the Accuracy Analyzer is a really helpful way of getting visual feedback throughout your reverse engineering project. You can turn it on, change the level of tolerance using this slider scale here, or if you want to look at some more properties or determine which uh, which scan data you want to compare with, you can change all of that in this settings menu on the right. Now, what happens if you accidentally close out of all of the all of the helpful displays uh, and menus? Well, don't fear. If you want to bring them back, simply go down to the the console menu. Right click, my apologies, the console is also something that you can toggle on and off. So come all the way down to the very lowest menu, right click, and then you should be able to select all of the things that you have previously turned on or off. So if you've lost a particular tab, this is how to get it back. Another helpful tab, is the help. This is next to the feature tree menu, uh, but I don't typically use the help in this instance. I actually use the help contextually. So say I'm doing a mesh sketch and I want to learn more about the mesh sketch tool. Well, if I press F1, sometimes you might have to press the, uh, the Fn and then F1, depending on how your keyboard is set up, it will pull up a contextual help. So I've got the help specifically around the mesh sketch tool. Now, if I was in the automatic segmentation tool or the regioning tool, I can press F1 again, and instead of the mesh sketch, it now pulls up the automatic segment tool help guide. So that's really useful when you're just getting started to know how to quickly get some help when you need it. That is everything for this getting started guide. Hopefully you're now feeling a little bit more confident and comfortable in the software and you can start your first project. Thanks. See you next time.